Okay, homework, page six. Number one, since I came to this country, I have learned a lot about the way of life here. The idea is uh, after learning this, I am better adapted to this country. So it is I have learned. You could also say I have been learning a lot. Since gives you a beginning time. And the idea would then be that every day is a day of learning. So the learning is continuous. I have been learning a lot. Either one is OK. Number two. I arrived simple past arrived here only a short time ago i have been here since last friday i have been here since last friday number three how long have you been living here i have been here for almost two years. Number four, why have you not been in class? It's the same as have been here, except it's negated, so you have to add a not. So why have you not been in class? Five. I have been coaching a soccer team for the last two months. This sentence gives us the amount of time. During this time, it has been continuous. This person has been coaching all of the last two months. So it is, I have been coaching. Six. My grandfather lived. There's no reason to add a perfect tense. This is the first sentence of it looks like a, a short story. So my grandfather lived in a small village in Italy when he was a child. At 19, he moved to Rome where he met and married my grandmother in 1957. So far, it's just telling a story, nothing too fancy, nothing too complicated. So we can just use the simple past. My father was born in Rome in 1960. I was born in Rome in 1989. Okay, so number six is just a story. Nothing uh, that tells us we have to use the perfect or perfect progressive. J simple is fine. Seven, since, okay, so I have been living in my cousin's apartment since I arrived here. Arriving is a simple action, so you don't need the have. But this gives us the starting point. And this person starting from this point has continuously lived here. So this is I have been living. It is very small. The person is still in this room, so it's present tense. It is very small and we share the bedroom. If you say we are sharing, that means temporarily for now at the moment, maybe not always. But here I think this person means that the general arrangement is that they share the bedroom. This is the usual situation. 
So we share the bedroom. I need my own place, but I haven't found one so far. So far tells us that maybe something will be different in the future. So this should be perfect aspect. I haven't found one. Okay, someone is asking, could it be I can't find one? Uh, so far, so it should at least be past tense. So I couldn't find one. Uh, so as we mentioned last week, it's just a difference in emphasis. The grammar is usually uh, acceptable either way. But I think in this case, the emphasis should be on up to this point uh, the process that has been finished. I haven't found one. Number eight, when I was a child, I lived. It's just a simple story. I lived with my grandmother instead of my parents. Grandpa. Had died. This is in the past. The entire story, right? I was a child. The entire story is in the past. So this should be had. Past perfect. Had died before I was born. So I never knew him. Grandma raised me alone. Everything else is fine. OK, do you have questions about these eight? All right. This one, D I E D, died. Died, died, died. So we're using the past participle, the third kind. The word dead is an adjective. Here you need a verb. Dead is an adjective. If you want to use dead, you would say grandpa is dead or was dead. The noun is death, th. Oh, sorry, yes, okay, so. OK, let's move on to the second half of this page. Number one, I have been studying here since last January. Right, it gives us the starting time and the action is continuing from that moment to now. So I have been studying. Number two, by the time Hassan returned to his country, okay, so we have a point in time. This is the end point. By the time means before this. He had been away from home for more than three years. Three, after I graduate, I am going to return to my hometown. This does not have to be future. After a certain thing has happened, this does not have a specific time. So we just use the original form. Four, by the end of the 21st century, man, which means humans. So the end of the 21st century, this is the future. 
will have discovered the cure for the common cold. Why do we use have? Because the idea is therefore nobody would have to suffer from having a cold. So the emphasis is not just on this event happening, it's on the effects of this event. So will have discovered. Number four, OK, man will have discovered. That's it. Number five, I want to get married, but I. OK, so again, we have yet, which means so far, so I haven't met. The right person yet. So we the word yet, just like um, so far here, implies that maybe something will be different in the future. So it's not a simple description of the situation. There's thinking about what's going to happen next. And so we use the perfect aspect, which is about how one sentence relates to its Future effect. Um, so I haven't met. Six, I have seen that movie three times. If you say I have been seeing that movie three times, it sort of means like as you were watching the movie, somebody interrupted you, or you want to emphasize that you have uh, gone through this process or this action. But here it simply means the person saw the movie and they are emphasizing because they saw it three times, therefore something else. So the best answer is I have seen. And now I want to see it again. Um, in everyday speech, some people might say I am wanting to see it again to emphasize their desire to see it again. But uh, using a simple present tense is enough. Now I want to. Number seven. I do not like my job. My brother wants me to quit. I think he is right. So do not like and I think. Once again, in daily life, you might hear somebody say I am thinking. Uh, and that would emphasize the uncertainty. If you say I think he's right, you are pretty sure that he's right. But if you say I am thinking he's right, that means. You are not very sure you think maybe, but you're you're still trying to think about it. You're in the middle of thinking. So if you say I think he's right, then the next action will probably be this person will go quit the job. But if you say I'm thinking he's right, the next sentence might be, maybe I really should quit. So it's not that certain. Number eight, while I. Mm, OK, so while I am studying tonight or while I study tonight, both are fine. I'm going to listen to classical music. This is good. So the usual answer is while I study tonight. Uh, simple present. But you can also emphasize the continuous nature of the action while I'm studying. Because the picture that we have is somebody is studying and the music is playing and both are happening at the same time for a long continuous time. Uh, so if you say am studying. Uh, it's also fine. 
but do not say while I will study tonight. That is not correct. Nine, we washed the dishes and cleaned up the kitchen. So this should be cleaned. After our dinner guests left. Past tense, past tense, left. 10. My neighbors are Mr. and Mrs. Sanchez. I, okay, so another since. So I have known them ever since I was a child. Um, emphasizing how long this person has known them. So I, it's, it's not just I knew them, it's I have known them. 11. Many scientists believe there, okay, in the near future, so there will be a major earthquake in California in the near future. Questions about this page? Next page. Yes. OK, so like, is this sentence possible? How do scientists know? They don't know, but there is an average frequency of around 50 years. So there are no there's no really like. Sign to say, hey, maybe there will be an earthquake soon. They simply look and say, oh, the last earthquake was around 50 years ago. It's about time. Maybe there will be another one soon. OK. OK, so. Uh, so this is part of the sentence to help us decide what uh, tense to use. In the near future tells us this is future tense. If it's present tense without in the near future, it could mean that the earthquake is happening right now. And, or if this is past tense, it's talking about a, an earthquake that happened in the past. So without this context, we don't know the time of this sentence. Okay. Okay, don't worry, we, we can talk about it later. Page seven. I haven't been in this town very long. I came here just two weeks ago, past tense. Two, dormitory life is not quiet. Everyone shouts is, right? Present tense. So this is the usual situation. Everyone shouts and makes. If this ends with an S, this also ends with an S makes a lot of noise in the halls. Remember, in English, everyone is every single person. So this is singular, 单数. Three, my friends will meet me when I arrive at the airport. Four, hasn't anyone ever told has told you to knock on the door before you enter someone else's room. OK, so the next part you can say, haven't your parents taught you that? Or you can say, didn't your parents teach you that? Uh, and the reason you can use simple past is because the per the idea of the perfect aspect already appeared in the first part. So in this context, we know that this person is asking, uh, did nobody teach you? Why are you like this? So the second sentence isn't asking, did anyone teach you? 
it's asking, did your parents do their job? It's actually insulting the person's parents. So in the second sentence, the emphasis is not on did anyone teach you in the past? It's on did your parents do their job? So you can use simple past um, for this sentence. Five, the phone rang, ring, rang, rung, rang while I was doing the dishes. In this case, um, past progressive would be better. If you emphasize that this is a continuous action, then we get a stronger sense that the phone interrupts you in the middle of when you're doing the dishes. So while I was doing the dishes, right? Past tense, past tense. I dried my hands, past tense, and answered it. When I heard my husband's voice, I was very happy. This is a mistake that uh, Chinese speakers often make. Right in Chinese, it's like 我很高兴, but in English, you need to have a be verb. I was very happy. Six. Okay, for the last four months, again, a long period of time. So I have been in the United States for the last four months. During this time, you can say I have done, or you can say I did. You already have the perfect aspect in the first part of this um, context. So when the person continues talking, we know that they're talking about this period of time. You don't have to repeat the perfect aspect. If you want to, you can, but you can also just use simple past. So I have done many things and seen many places. Or I did many things and saw many places. Seven, sorry, yes. If you say I was in the United States for the last four months, this means that you have just arrived somewhere outside the United States because then this entire sentence is in the past. If you say I have been, have is present, right? Present perfect. So the person is still in the United States. Actually, that's a good question. If you use I was, uh, then that means you are no longer in the United States. So the second sentence should be past perfect. So I was in the US, I had done and had seen. See, changing a little point of grammar can give you a completely different situation. Isn't grammar fun? Seven, when the old man started to walk back, okay, I'm going to say started walking back to his hut. And the reason walking is slightly better than to walk here is something we will talk about uh, in a few weeks. But the main idea is to walk is not certain. Uh, starting to walk means that Maybe the man has decided he will begin walking, but he has not actually begun walking. His legs have not started moving. But here, the idea of the sentence is at the moment that he is walking at that time, the sun had already hidden itself behind the mountain. So at that moment, the sun was already gone. The sentence structure is 
description of the sun interrupts the man's walking. So it would be better to say started walking. Does that make sense? Uh, like we had the sentence earlier, right? The phone rang as I was doing the dishes. Same thing. The, uh, like you can say he noticed that the sun was gone as he was walking home. So started walking is better. Eight, while I was writing my composition last night, someone knocked on the door, past tense. Nine, why did you write a children's book? Ten, next year is the future. So I'm really glad you will visit or you are going to visit my hometown next year. You can even say I'm really glad you are visiting. Present progressive to express the future. 11, while I was visiting, this is spelled wrong. Visiting has one S. Sorry, one T. Visiting. While I was visiting my cousin in Los Angeles, we went to a restaurant and ate Thai food. Past tense. You know what? I'm going to change the first part. When? I visited. So it's not just a spelling problem. This should be when I visited. And here's the reason. When you visit somebody in another city, the entire trip is your visit, right? It's not just one moment. So going to a restaurant and eating Thai food is part of the visit. This action does not interrupt the visit. It is part of the visit. So saying while I was visiting, I was interrupted by the visit does not make sense. It's better to say when I visited, which means during my visit. You want me to explain that again? Yeah, we don't want to say 好,就是用壞了的代表說辭序嘛,然後第二個部分就會打斷第一個部分,但是拜訪人家包含去外面吃泰式,它是同一件事情,同一件事情不能打斷同一件事情,所以我們把壞了改成壞比較合理。when I was a child, I viewed things from a much lower height. Many physical objects around me appeared, past tense, very large. When I wanted to move something such as a chair, I needed help. So the whole thing is a story in the past tense, simple past. 13, when I was in my country, I was afraid to come to the US. I thought I wouldn't be able to. Here's the thing. The, the idea is this person was planning on going to the US. So before they went, they were imagining what it could be like. So every like the second sentence should be uh, some kind of future tense, right? They are imagining the future. But uh, the main verb is couldn't walk. 
we can simplify and say can walk. What is the future of can walk? So here, here's what this looks like. Past, present, future is can. Oh, not can. Could, can, and the future is will be able to. So if the sentence says, uh, I can walk and it's supposed to be in the future, you have to say, I will be able to walk. But here it's not can, it's could, because the entire story is in the past. Well, I guess this these two first two sentences are in the past. So uh, as we mentioned before, if you have to talk about the future from the past, you have to use would. Would is the past tense of will. So this answer is I wouldn't be able to. But now, OK, so we're jumping to the present. Now I have. A different opinion. Uh, OK, for three months, so I have been living or I have lived. Both are fine in this small town for three months. And have learned that there is very little crime here. Questions about this page? Sorry. Number number three. When I arrive. That's it. When I arrive. Other questions? OK, next page. Number uh, page eight. Number one, Citizen Kane is a great classic movie. I have seen it ten times. Number two, War and Peace is a long novel. I have been reading it for two months and I am still not finished with it. This is a classic use of the perfect progressive. Continuing for a long period of time up to an endpoint, and the continuing and the ending affect the next part of the sentence. So it's emphasizing the continuous two months and it's emphasizing up to this moment. So it's like even though I have been reading it for so long, even now I am still not finished. So this is a classic perfect progressive sentence structure. Three. Our guests left yesterday. There are some contexts where you would say our guests have left yesterday. No, 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 you wouldn't. It would be our guests had left yesterday. The idea is like if somebody asks you, hey, where are our guests? You might say, oh, our guests had left yesterday. So like, why are you asking? But if there's no special context, a simple past tense would be enough. Four, we have been studying all night. Let's take a break now. If you simply say we have studied all night, that doesn't really tell you how tired they are. 
you have to also emphasize that they have been continuing to study all night. So it's perfect progressive. Five, let's not leave yet. I have been having such a wonderful time at this party. Uh, I think last time we may have talked about using the word have. If you just mean like it's in your hand or it's in your bank account, you cannot use the progressive tense. Either you own it or you don't own it. There is no continue. But here it's not about owning anything. It's a phrase, right? To have a wonderful time, to have a good time just means to enjoy themselves. So in this use of the word have, you can use having. Let's not leave yet is the present tense. Uh, we're going to talk about this later. This is the imperative mood. This person is asking or ordering the other person not to go. So it has to be in the present. Uh, when somebody gives an order, it's always in the present. Right? If I say, open the door, how do I say that in the past tense? I can't, right? The order exists only in the present. So let's not leave yet has to be present tense. Therefore, I have been present perfect. Sorry, present perfect progressive have been having. Six, by the time I got home, the rest of the family had eaten. By the time means before, right? So it, I got home is past had eaten is past. Seven, I was late for my nine o'clock class, so I had to run. This is a trick question. Have to is not a grammar concept, right? It means I must in the past tense. Uh, so I had to run all the way from my dorm to my class. Yes. You could say so I ran a uh, simple past. Uh, without the meaning that you must that could also work. Um, but it would be clearer if you keep the idea that you had to do this. Eight. Mrs. Wong isn't in the hospital anymore. She had left early this morning or she left early this morning. Both are fine. Nine, I was born on February 29th in 1960, a leap year. February 29th occurs only once every four years. So by the time the 21st century OK, so this textbook is very old. The answer that it wants is. Begins. Which means it has not yet happened, but today we are already in the 21st century. So for us, the correct answer is. Began. I had celebrated. So if you're looking at this from 1999, the answer would be that by the time the 21st century begins, I will have celebrated. But looking at it today, by the time the 21st century began, I have, or sorry, I had celebrated because the beginning of the 21st century is in the past. 10, A, are you still on the phone? Are you holding on for someone? B, yes, I am. OK, so today we don't have to use the word on. You can just say, are you holding for someone? B, yes, I am. I am still holding for, right? No on, holding for the technical help department. I have been holding for more than half an hour. Questions about this part? Okay, next. This is the hard one. 
or these are the hard ones. Solange grew up in Brazil and she misses it. When she was a teenager, she uh, didn't use to. The past tense is on the didn't, so use does not need a past tense. Right? When you have a series, when you have a verb cluster, only the first word tells you the time, the tense. So didn't use to study very hard at school. Instead, she past tense would go to the beach every day and have fun with her friends. So would go and would have. You don't have to repeat the would. Solange is married. Sorry, no, for 10 years. So has been married to Ty, who's American, for 10 years. So you don't need this being. Has been married. Solange and Ty have two children, Ava and Jacob. Solange wants to show her homeland to her family. They last year, so they OK, and then they had to call off the trip, so they planned to go last year, but they didn't actually go, so they would have gone. To Brazil last year. But unfortunately, they had to call off the trip, though they had been planning it for months. Again, emphasizing a long period of time. So had been planning it. Solange hopes that they can go next year instead. Questions about this part? OK. Hey, Cheryl, how are you doing? B, good. I've been traveling all over the country for work. By the time the summer is over, I'll have visited, right, have visited 10 cities, and I'll have been traveling because we have a long period of time, four, three months straight, have been traveling. Traveling with one L, please. Unless you're British. A. Wow, that's a lot. Did you come to New York too? Okay, so th there's a small question. It, should it be come or should it be go? If A is currently in New York, then this should be come. If A is not in New York, it should be go. So let's keep this in mind as we read. Uh, we know that B does not live in New York. That's why A is asking, right? So let's say, did you come to New York too? B, yes, actually, I'll, this should be go. I'll go to New York next week, right? B is not in New York, so she, she cannot come to New York. She has to go to New York. Can we get together? Okay, so this tells us that A does live in New York, so this should be come. This is correct. A, sure, call me when you get to town, when you get here, when you arrive. Present tense, simple present, when you get to town. If you say when you're getting to town, that means when you're almost here, when, when you're still in the process of getting here. But I'm pretty sure A means when you actually arrive, when you are already here. So when you get to town. It'll be great to see you B. I will call you. As soon as I arrive at my hotel. This is in the future, so the main verb should be will call. Questions? Yes.
Sorry, sorry. What's your question? Ah, okay. Thank you. Good catch. Yes. So, um, good. B says by the time the summer is over, I will have visited. So B is still traveling. Uh, the travels are not over yet. So A is asking about the future. Will you come to New York? Yeah, that makes more sense. Thank you. Other questions? See, just like when uh, Taylor Swift is performing live and she sings something wrong, this proves I'm doing this live. OK, if you don't have other questions, let's move on to this week's unit. Um, for those of you at home, I recently noticed that I'm moving too fast. We're actually moving into the first unit of October. The passive voice. Bum, bum, bum. So in English, there are two grammatical voices, active and passive. Active is simply the normal, regular sentence structure. If I say something to you, uh, then I comes first and then something comes second. That's active. Passive is when you flip the two around. So. This is active. It's the order that you expect. Passive is when you flip it around. Something is said by me. Uh, we should use past tense. Past tense is better. Something was said by me. So how do we go from active to passive? I will tell you after a short break.
So how do we form the passive voice? It's very much like the perfect aspect. So the perfect aspect is I had said something, right? This is the past perfect. For the passive voice, the object goes first, something. And then instead of the word have, we use the be verb, was. And then we add the past participle. And in fact, this could be the end of the sentence. One or the major use of the passive voice is because the subject is unknown or unclear or you want to hide the subject. So in fact, this is a complete sentence. You don't have to say who said it. If you do want to say who the original subject is, use by. By means. So to recap, the passive sentence structure is object plus be verb plus past participle plus it, oh, if you want to plus by subject. So now that we have this formula, we can combine the passive voice with the different aspects that we have been learning. So uh, my example was something was said by me. This is simple past. What if we have um, past perfect passive? Something past perfect had, and then you need a be verb for the passive, been, said. Okay, by me. Same thing for the future perfect passive. Something future perfect will have, and then you need a be verb for the passive, been, and then the past participle of the original verb said by me. Right? So in this case, this is past perfect. Sorry, this is past. Have plus been is past perfect. And then be plus said is passive. In each case, again, only the first verb tells you the tense, past, present, or future. Everything else tells you the aspect or the voice. We can do this with progressive too. Something progressive, past, progressive, passive. So was be verb plus ing, right? Was being, this is past progressive. Being plus past participle, being said is passive by me. So this is this is past. This is past progressive. This is passive. So this is the past progressive in the passive voice. And then finally, we have the perfect progressive in the passive voice. So something, let's keep it in the past. Had been being said by me. This is past. This is past perfect. This is perfect progressive. And then this is passive voice. Let's try future perfect progressive in the passive voice. Something future will perfect progressive, so first perfect, have been, and then progressive, so been being, 
and then passive being said. This sentence is perfectly grammatical and extremely rare. I can pretty much guarantee that you will never see this sentence in your four years at Mingchuan. Except for this class, but it is a possible sentence based on the rules of grammar that we have been discussing so far. So this is uh, the meaning of this sentence will have been being said by me means, first of all, uh, the basic idea is sometime in the future, I will be telling you something. I will be telling you for a long time, and this is something that will affect something else after that. The fact that I spend so much time telling you this in the future will have an effect on the next thing. And then finally, when I uh, express this idea, I want to emphasize the thing that I say and not the fact that I am the one saying it. So I put something first because the something is more important than the by me. Does that make sense? So again, um, active and passive, usually the two forms mean the same thing. The only difference is that in the passive voice, you don't have to say the subject. So if you don't know who said this, or sorry, if you don't know who will have been saying this, you don't have to say by whom. Or if you don't want to tell people who said this. Um, so these are the two main uses of the passive voice. You don't know uh, or you don't want the other person to know the subject. Let's try another example. Somebody give me a verb. Right. That's kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> Say and write. Hypothesize. Uh, so the original sentence could be she hypothesizes. She hypothesizes that the book will be hard to burn. Now, in this original sentence, this is the object. We're going to talk about this after the midterm, but this entire situation is the object. Um, none of this has to be changed. We're only talking about the verb. So, flipping this around, putting the object first, that the book will be hard to burn is the object. And then the time, the tense, this is present tense, is, and this is simple present, so you can simply add the past participle to form the passive. And you don't have to say who. Uh, in fact, this kind of sentence you will often see in scientific writing. In science, they often don't really care about who does the experiment. Uh, they mostly care about what happens and why. OK, so that is the basic idea of the passive voice. Do you have questions? OK, let me add some concepts. If this still confuses you, please raise your hand. Yeah, guys, you're only going to do yes. 
When do you use surprised? When do you use surprising? If you have a hard time remembering this, remember the passive voice. I was surprised is in fact passive. Surprise is a verb. To make somebody feel surprised. So in this sentence, was surprised is passive voice, right? Be verb plus past participle. And this is a hint that the person who feels the surprise, sorry, surprise is noun and a verb. The person who feels the surprise is the person talking. I was surprised. Somebody did the surprise to me. I was surprised. But if you use the present participle ing, the thing that surprises you is the subject. In terms of English grammar, this is the expected word order. So for example, uh, the loud noise surprised me. This is the expected sentence order in English. So you see that it is the thing that does the action and has an effect on the person. So surprised me is kind of like saying was surprising to me. So this can help you remember that ing is used when the subject is the thing that causes the surprise. And ed is for when it is the person who feels the surprise as the subject. And this is why we call these the present participle and the past participle. Participle, it's a part. It does two things at once. It is a verb, right? Uh, was surprised by, this is a verb, but it's also an adjective. I was surprised. This is like saying, uh, I was cold, right? It's an adjective. Participles are called participles because they are at the same time a verb and an adjective. Questions? Okay, so that is the passive voice. Sometimes, depending on specific verbs, you don't use by, you use another word, but it depends on the verb. So if we see a surprising verb, I will tell you what word to use here instead of by. Okay, if you don't have questions, let's look at the practice. Page nine. Choose all of the correct sentences. So which ones are correct? There are only five questions. Page, yeah, there are only five questions. I will give you two minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Number one, Wang Rinjie. Wang Rinjie, I'm on. Yes, number one, which ones are correct? A is correct, good. And? C or D? Try again. D. Um, so as we saw in the practice, the loud noise surprised me. So these instructions confuse me. In the active voice, the thing causes the emotion for the person. Uh, C is passive voice, so it should begin with the person. OK, number two. C. Are you sure? If it begins with the thing, it is active voice. So, A, the thing interests the person. Is this correct? Yes, good. A is correct. B, the thing is interesting to the person. Is this correct? Is this active voice? It is active voice, right? It's present progressive. Right? Uh, B verb plus past participle, this is passive. But B verb plus present participle is active. So B is also correct. C, thing, passive, person. Is this correct? Active is thing, verb, person, so the passive should be person, passive, thing. So C is not correct. D, person, active, thing. Is this correct? No, it's not correct. Good. Remember, active voice is thing causes emotion to person, passive voice is person feels emotion from thing. It's kind of different from Chinese. Um, so this kind of sentence, you'll notice it does not use by. It uses to. Both are correct depending on the emphasis. Sorry, wrong sentence. Uh, if there is a passive version of this sentence, both would be correct. Pa active voice is interesting too. This is correct. Um, if this is interested, let's say this is passive, is interested in, you could use in or you could use by. Either one is fine. But the emphasis is different. If you say in, that means like the person is taking a really strong interest, um, taking the initiative, and like uh, studying and trying to understand this. If you use by, that means the thing gives them the feeling of being interested. And there's less a sense of jumping in and trying to find out. So the meaning is the same, but the emphasis is different. Number three. We'll see ya. Yes, number three, which ones are correct? A or B? B, good. Uh, to B plus past participle is passive, person, passive, thing. Good. C and D, which one is correct? C, good. 
uh, this is active voice, right? There's no be verb. So this is simple past tense. Thing, active, person. Number four. Wei Chun Mao. Yes. B and D. This is shocking news. Good. The news. Uh, this is the thing, right? This means news. So the thing, active, uh, and there's no person in this part of the sentence. And then D, person, passive, thing. So these two are correct. Good. And number five, Eliza. B and C are boring active voice, thing, active, person, correct. C, person, passive, thing, also correct. Good. Okay, do you have questions about this page? All right, next page. Thirteen sentences one of them is correct um 13 sentences i will give you eight do you need eight minutes no i'll give you six minutes
Oh, I should say this is not a test. Your practice questions will not be graded. So you can talk with your classmates. You can discuss these questions. Okay, let's compare answers. Number one, the plane was arrived very late. Wang Peiqi. Are you here, Wang Peiqi? Yes, number one. Good, it should be active. The plane arrived very late. Good. Number two, four people injured in the accident. Chen Yupei. Are you here? Yes, number two. Okay, so yes, there is something missing here. Are you sure the answer is was? Four people were injured in the accident. Good. 
number okay and uh, we don't really need to think about present or future. This is not a general situation. You can't and you can't predict how many people. So it's simple past. Number three, Bella is married with Jose. Liu Zexuan. Okay, wait, hang on. Ah, Liu Yuzhe, Number three. Good, Bella is married to Jose. Um, a quick note about married. We don't use the word by because married actually has two meanings. To marry, the first meaning is uh, to become spouses with somebody. The second meaning is to make two people married. So if you say, I married him, that means he is now your husband. But if you say, I married them, that means you put these two people together to become uh, part life partners or spouses. So usually in this case, the I would be like a judge or a religious figure. So if you say, uh, like here, if you say Bella, let's say was married by Jose, that means that Jose was the judge at their wedding. And we don't know who Bella's partner is. So it should be with, oh, sorry, it should be to, married to Jose. If you say Bella was married to Jose, that means they are no longer married. It was in the past. Uh, maybe Jose died or Jose cheated on her and got divorced. Yes. Yes, here in this case, we are looking at the word married as an adjective. It's simply describing Bella's situation. Other questions about three? All right, number four, people are worried with global warming. Johnington. Johnington. I just saw him. Okay. I'll talk with him on Thursday. Huang Xingru. Huang Xingru. No? Shri Jie. Shri Jie. Interesting. Wang Hi, number four. Okay, so you're right. It should not be with. The better choice is about. Worried about global warming. There are some contexts where we would say worried with, but um, the, there's a slight difference, right? Worried with suggests a kind of direct involvement, direct engagement, but worried about, uh, the word about means related to. It suggests that the thing is like, kind of far away, it's not here yet, but you're still worried. Um, global warming is one of those big things, uh, so about would be the better choice. We're going to talk about prepositions near the end of the semester, and I'm going to say that prepositions are the part of English that change the fastest. Native speakers, uh, 
always change the language, and usually the fastest changes happen with prepositions. Um, so I'm just giving you the current thinking. Um, and currently this should be worried about. Number five, astronomers are interesting in several new meteors. Wang Li Ting. Wang Li Ting Zaima. Yes, number five. It's not in. OK, so let's take a look. Astronomers, person. Interest, verb. Meteors, object. Should this be active or passive? It is active, but it should be passive. Thing causes emotion to people. So if it begins with people, it should be passive. So what should this be? Good, interested in. Number six, we were surprised by Harold's announcement. Number six. Okay, you could say at. By and at are both good. Is surprise correct? Surprised, good. Should be past tense. Person, past tense, thing. Surprised by, surprised at mean basically the same thing. Um, there, again, there is a very slight difference. Surprised at usually means that the information is surprising. Surprised by can sometimes mean the timing is surprising. So in this case, maybe we already kind of knew that Harold was going to say something. What was surprising was that Harold chose this time to tell us and not another time. Is a possible explanation of this sentence. But if you say surprised at, then it has to be the information that is surprising. Seven, Spanish is spoken by people in Mexico. Kanjingwei. Number seven. Yep, this sentence is correct. Good job. Number eight. This road is not the right one. We lost. Liu Zhenxing. Liu Zhenxing Hi, number eight. Is the second sentence missing something? OK, let me give you a hint. This word looks like this. So is this missing something? Yeah, it's missing a B verb. So this road is not the right one. We are lost. This one. So, OK, so. We are lost equals sorry equals we have lost our way. 
So, uh, and then if you are using the present tense, it's we lose our way. So you have to have this. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Ah, so if you say we lose, that means we did not win. Or I guess we do not win, sorry, present tense. Okay, if you want to talk about this, we can talk about it after class. Uh, okay, number nine, Pat should try that new medicine he might helped. This part, right? So what what should be changed? He might help. Okay, so person first, and then we don't have a thing. Person plus verb is should this be active or passive? If the person comes first, it should be passive. So if this is passive, how do we fix this? It's missing a be verb, so he might be helped. We use the original form be because might is maybe. If it's maybe, then we don't have a time. We don't know if it's past, present, or future. So we just use the original form B. Okay? Okay, good. Number 10. Lunch is being served in the cafeteria right now. Sui Chen. Sui Chen. No? Sui Chen, San Si. No. San Si Ha. Yes, number 10. You mean here? This should be. So bin is wrong. That's correct. What should this be? Here's a hint right now. So this is. Sorry. Yeah, it's present progressive. So is being served. Lunch is being served in the cafeteria right now. Being, ing. Uh, yes, because it gives you a specific time right now. If you use simple present, that just means usually lunch is served in the cafeteria. But here we have a specific time. Uh, and in English, if you talk about the present, the actual present, it has to be progressive. Eleven, something unusual was happened yesterday. Zhang Ziqing. Zhang Ziqing. Yes, number 11. Good, something unusual happened. Thing, verb, uh, and there's no person, so it's active voice. No was. Something unusual happened. Good. 12. Will be fixed the refrigerator today. Li Yes, number 12. Good. Will the refrigerator be fixed today? The original sentence is subject the refrigerator verb passive voice will be fixed um let me write that down 
the refrigerator will be fixed. In order to form a question, we move the first word in the verb cluster. This is the verb cluster. We move the first word. Will the refrigerator be fixed? Question. Good. And number 13, nobody knows how old my grandfather was when he died last year, but he must have been over 100 years old. He remembers the flu epidemic of 1918. Lishan? Good, that's one problem. He remembered because he's now dead. There's another problem. He must have been. Must have means you're guessing. You don't know. So there's no time for guessing. Must have been. OK, questions about this page? If you don't have a question about this page, your homework is. Hang on, let me check. Auxiliary. Okay, your homework is up to. The middle of page 13. Page 13 has three parts. Please finish up to the end of the second part. Yes, or 30, 3 0. So, page 13, the middle part. The bottom part of page 13 is for next week. Okay, see you next week.